Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about cross-site scripting, what is it, and how to protect yourself from it at the most basic level. Let's get right into it. Okay, so what is cross-site scripting? Well, it's a vulnerability, or rather an attack, that can be performed on a website whenever user input or untrusted data is put into your page. To demonstrate this, we are on a site called xssgame.com, and I'm going to walk you through some simple attacks. This website gives us a little browser window here that we can perform these attacks on, and our goal is to get an alert to appear on the page. We can take a look at the code, and there's even hints if you get stuck, so I encourage you to go through these yourself. So this first one, if you notice when we type in text in the search bar, it appears in the URL, and then also right here, and it's in bold, which gives us a little hint here that we could probably type in HTML if we wanted. Just to show you what I mean, we could go ahead and throw in a div and style it, or sorry, a span, and style it to be red. As you can see, when we press search, it's putting our HTML directly onto the page, and that is a clear sign that there is a cross-site scripting vulnerability, so we can go ahead, throw in a script tag, and just alert hi, or any letter, whatever we want to alert. Obviously, an alert is not dangerous, but the ability to run any JavaScript I want in that website is inherently vulnerable, and there are several way more malicious things I could do. In this example, we have a chat here that we can post things to. And as you can see, we're able to put HTML just like before. So we probably could get away with doing a script tag, but let's do something a little different here. Another method of cross-site scripting is to use event handlers inside of Elements. And one of the most popular ones is the on-air event handler for the image tag. So if the image fails to load, it will trigger the on-air event. So what we can do is just create an image tag here set the SRC to something completely bogus that will not resolve to an actual image, and we can set the on air to just alert some message. So this is the last one we'll do here. As you can see, we have a picture and we have these little buttons here that will go to different tabs. And if we look at the code, you can see that it's just taking a number, it's doing parse int on that number to resolve that to an actual integer instead of a string. And then you can see right in the line below it that it's just taking that number and throwing it into the source for the image. So what we can actually do is we can break out of this single quote here and we can just inject our own code. And now this is taken from the get variable, so we're going to type this into the URL bar. We're going to first close out of that single quote, and then we can just go ahead and type whatever we want. In this case, we'll use the on air like we did before to make our alert. And there we go. So there's some examples of cross-site scripting. If I actually go ahead and inspect the element here, you can see how this worked. It closed out of that single quote, and then here's my on error code that I injected in. Obviously, like I said before, you can do a lot more malicious things with this, so it's important that you understand how cross-site scripting works and how to prevent it. So let's take a look first at this OWASP page. This is a great site that has a bunch of information, not only on cross-site scripting, but all kinds of web vulnerabilities. And this is a little cheat sheet on how to prevent cross-site scripting. So as you can see, rule one here is to avoid putting untrusted data in all of these places. In fact, if you don't have to put untrusted data on your site, don't. That's the rule number one. So here's our website, and what I've done is I've just added this uh, hello and then the user's name. So if you look here, you can see we are just connecting to the database. We are selecting all of our information about the current logged in user and storing it in this array called the user. As you can see, that array is printed out at the bottom of the screen. And then I'm just echoing out the user's name right in the center of the page right here. This information below is just for debug purposes and just to show you guys what the user object looks like. So that's great, but what if we create a new account here? We delete our old one and create a new account, except this time we create the name so that it is injecting script tags into the document. And we'll do the same thing that we did on the XSS game where we just alert something to the screen. We'll go through and register our user completely, and you'll notice that our register script is actually not going to allow us to use this name because it contains invalid characters. And that's not obviously perfect protection against cross-site scripting, but it's pretty hard to cross-site script when you can only use letters. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our register script and just comment out the line that checks this. That way we can put in this invalid name to prove that it is possible to inject some code into our site. Now if we go through, register our user, validate our email, and now log in, what you'll see right away is that an alert pops up the second we get onto the page. 
So we've successfully cross-site scripted this secure site. As you can see here, our name is a script tag. We don't see it up here because it is actually putting it into the HTML and injecting and running that code. So it's time to protect against that now. So to prevent this, if we look at our cheat sheet, we need to transform these characters into these HTML entities. Lucky for us, there's a function called HTML special chars in PHP that is going to do just that. If we look at the first variable is going to be the string we want to encode, and the second variable is for flags, and we actually want to use this end quotes flag so that we are performing this transformation for both little quotes, or sorry, single quotes and double quotes. So we'll just copy this in here, add our end quotes flag, and when we refresh, you can see that the name appears more like we'd expect, and we are no longer injecting code into our site. This transformation needs to occur anytime you're putting untrusted data on your website. There are even special cases where this is not enough, and so we'll look at those. The first one that comes to mind is putting data in an attribute. Not only do you need to use the HTML special characters function, but you also need to make sure that you put quotes around your attributes. For most of you, you might already do this, but some people do not put quotes around their attributes, which is fine, except for when you're using untrusted data like this. You want to make sure that you put quotes around it so that the untrusted data cannot escape out of those quotes like we did in the XSS game. So by adding these quotes, we have made ourselves a lot safer against injection. I'm using the word injection here, and that might be a little bit misleading because it kind of reminds me of SQL injection. Just know that those two are different things. You can look here, there are special cases where we don't want to be putting any data into the attribute. Those attributes include the href, the src, and several others. So make sure you look at the cheat sheet for exactly what you're trying to do and make sure that it is safe. Another common example that we could do here is getting JSON objects and putting them into JavaScript. So taking our user information and passing that along to our JavaScript, the way we would do that without protection would be to just echo the user into the script tag. And that is extremely dangerous because any untrusted data can just break out of that variable definition and execute any code that they want. JSON encode does make that a little bit harder, but that's still not a very good method. We can do even better and make sure that this untrusted data does not have any chance of running code. And to do that, we're going to refer back to our cheat sheet. And it's recommending that we actually take our code put it into the HTML document first, and then read the text content of that element in order to get to the JSON. So we'll go ahead and create a div here. I'm going to give it a class of hidden, which I've set up to just make the element invisible. And we'll give it an ID of data, and we will just echo out our HTML encoded, JSON encoded object. Now we can just go to our JavaScript, use JSON parse, and just get the text content of our data element. By doing that, we are using the browser as our JavaScript parser, or sorry, our JavaScript encoder, and our data has been sanitized. And now you can see we have that object in our JavaScript that we can use for whatever we want. So these are some very simple examples. I encourage you to go through the XSS game and check out the cheat sheet that I mentioned in this video because it will have a lot more specific information for different use cases that you might be using. If you guys enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe if you're interested in content just like this. We'll be continuing this series and hopefully putting out a lot more videos soon. Thank you all for watching, and make sure you check out the code on GitHub if you're interested in following along.